So I am Jessica. I'm currently working as a Vapan supervisor. I've been working as a um, software developer for a bit over 10 years now, and I'm using uh, Qt a lot. Uh, and we are going to do the session three uh, for uh, introduction to Qt. And this time we are going to uh, take what we've learned in the uh, first two session and create an actual application uh, in the uh, next session. So to start, I'm going to uh, send you on the chat some install steps. You don't have to do it. It's only if you want to code along. Uh, you can just follow uh, uh, the, uh, the talk if you want and do it later. Uh, I did put the link on the chat if you want to have the install steps. And for this session, uh, you actually need to, uh, if you want to uh, follow the code, maybe on your computer, that might be a bit easier to read. Uh, you can access this uh, session code. Uh, here we have, uh, there's like multiple uh, Python file. Um, I will like explain what they do, uh, but you mostly have two and you have uh, DUI uh, in various uh, steps. So we're going to do an application uh, and we're going to do an application to filter curves. And we have a bunch of uh, core functions that I'm going to show very quickly. Uh, we have uh, a function to open and save a curve file as a JSON uh, format. We want to be able to uh, select a smooth intensity. We want to uh, select uh, an algorithm to smooth. So we have a few algorithms now we're implemented and we're going to use uh, our UI to switch between them. And uh, something important, uh, we also want to have a preview of, uh, of our smooth. So I'm going to switch over uh, to my code editor. And we do have, uh, so if you take a look uh, at the session three, we have, uh, a, we have some test data that we have our curve data, which is just a very, very simple one. It's just a list of uh, points on the uh, y-axis. We have a core uh, module. That's, uh, we're not going to really uh, talk about it. That's not the point of the session, but uh, that's what we want to have a, a UI for. So we have a function to read curve, a function to save them, and we have one main function, which is basically the crystal value, uh, some strengths, which is the intensity in the UI, uh, an algorithm, and an option to preserve the edge as well. And based on the algorithm and uh, the strengths, uh, it will filter a curve and return a list of filtered curve. So I put comment on the algorithm if you want to take a look at uh, later on, but uh, we're going to move on to the UI. So in terms of the UI, uh, the first step is to do a mockup. You really don't want to go blind and do a UI uh, without really thinking about it before. And I'm going to explain why uh, we do a mockup. Um, so on the left side, we have our mockup here. That's what we want the UI to look like. And on the uh, right side, we do have the final UI uh, that we're going to build. So if we take a look, uh, we can uh, we can look, say, okay, what do we need? In our case, we need a slider. And our slider look a bit different than uh, cute default slider. So we would have to uh, change how we draw the slider. That will be on the final station. And also on the final station, we're going to cover uh, the curve preview. So we want to basically, uh, based on those parameters, so the intensity slider, the algorithm, and the preserve edge, we want to run through our uh, smoothing function, get the uh, smooth uh, curve back, and we want to have a preview of it. So you can see in blue, that's the original value, and the one in red is the smooth uh, one. So now what do we need? So like I said, we need a slider. We need some uh, custom uh, widget here to display, to paint our uh, curve. That's how it's called, it's the paint event. 
So we want to print that curve. Then we want to have uh, an option uh, area, and we want to be able to collab that one. So through the uh, menus here, we want to have a drop down menu to select which uh, algorithm we want to use. We also want to uh, have some explanation on what this step is doing. So uh, we want to explain which algorithm and what they are good and, and better suited for. And we want to have a, a checkbox here to preserve the edge. So the preserve edge, you can see it here, uh, is to basically snap the start and end point uh, to their original value. So now uh, we're going to uh, start to think about how we're going to organize our interface. Uh, mostly the layouts, like I mentioned in the previous session, it can be uh, really like region dolls. So I really encourage you to, and that's what the mockup is uh, good for, to really think about how you're going to uh, create your layout and how you're going to organize your interface. Um, so as we can see here, we have uh, three major areas. I think we have four, but there's <laughs> Let's keep it simple. So we have the slider area here. So that's one layout. We have our curve uh, preview area. So that's a second layout. And then uh, for our first layout, we have the option area. And so when we go to the uh, slider area, we need actually uh, a secondary layout. And so we need uh, one for text here. For the curve preview, we need another one as well, just to have some padding. For the option, we need uh, we need actually uh, multiple ones. So we need one layout here for the option title bar, one layout uh, in like orange brown here. Uh, that the layout we're going to show and add. So that's when we press on plus uh, or minus, we're going to collapse uh, the interface, but actually we're just going to add the layout. We need one for the uh, algorithm parts, one for the uh, 2D text, and one for the preserve page. So why we do that is that one here that you see here is going to be top to bottom. So when our layout goes, they would stack on, on top of each other. And for the method, for example, we want to uh, stack our Q label and our uh, Q combo box uh, from left to right. And it's a bit similar for the um, slider here. We want to be able to uh, organize our Q-label from left to right, but have them from top to bottom here. So we're going to go into the code and we're going to start to work on our UI. So first we're going to uh, import PySide 2. However, that will work on with PySide 6 uh, with a few tweaks, uh, mostly on the uh, Q action. And we're going to import our uh, core functions. So the first step uh, is to basically create our main window and launch it. So we're going to uh, we're going to create our Q main window here. So we basically uh, inherit from Q main window and we a new instance, and we're going to uh, an action in uh, the previous session. We're just going to uh, launch it. So if we run this right now, we just have a simple uh, cumin window here with nothing else. Okay. So the next step uh, now is to we're going to say, okay, like, what do we need? So we need some uh, initial curve. That's only uh, for demo purpose. So in that case, uh, if you were going to do it, that would be an empty list. Because um, you would have your user open uh, a curve file. Now we want to uh, set a title and we also want to resize. So we uh, set the Windows title, that would be curve filter, and we set the size. And this size will become important. We're going to change uh, those parameters later on. But for now, we just uncut the value to a very specific side. And we're going to uh, then create our uh, main layouts and main, that, and main widget as well. So we start with a top to, top to bottom, because as you can see uh, in that one, we want to basically stack those 
one, two, uh, three, and four layouts from top to bottom. So that's what we do. Uh, we set the margin to zero. So we don't want any, any margin for that one. We are going to set the margin as well as the space, spacing uh, in our uh, downstream layouts. So the margin is uh, like usual. That's the uh, 2D I can show you here. The red layout have a margin of 10 on every uh, side. So top, left, right, and uh, bottom. That's what it corresponds to. The uh, spacing, as you can see it here, we have one layout here, the blue one. We have two uh, widgets, so Q label and Q combo box. And the spacing is the space between uh, those two uh, widgets. So now we create our uh, Q widget, which is going to be the main one. We assign the uh, main layout uh, to the Q widget. And then we set uh, our main widget as the central widget of the Q main window. So if we launch now, we should have a slightly bigger uh, window and we have a title here. So now what's corresponding to the uh, to this file over there. What you see here, that's the uh, UI1 file. Now we're going to go to the UI2. Um, so what do we want to do now? Um, we want to basically start to create our uh, other layout, the one we actually contain our widgets. So in the units of the uh, command window, we're going to Call the function which is quite intensity layout. I like to separate uh, my like different areas in different functions, mostly for housekeeping. So I don't have like one use giant file with like like the whole UI in the units. Um, I like to break it down. Uh, it's also useful if you want to basically reorganize um, how you do your UI, and also if you want to change the parents. So that's why I pass the main layout uh, here. So I can basically change the uh, parent layout of the uh, intensity uh, layout later on. So we're going to uh, start and create our uh, layout first. So we create our intensity layout. That will be for the uh, to only slider and the uh, slider value. So if we go back here, that's we're creating this one here. The uh, like violet purple one. So we do set a margin on that one because we do want a margin. And in this event, then uh, what we've done here, we create a, a, a layout top to bottom, our widget, and we set it. The only difference is that we, instead of doing a set central widget, we add our intensity widgets to the parent layouts which will be the main layout here. So uh, now what do we need? We need to create uh, two things. We need to create the tables to indicate a low, medium, or high intensity, and we need to create a slider. So we're first going to uh, create a layout for the uh, labels. So like I mentioned, like we want to have the uh, labels on top of the slider. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, create a um, uh, layout here. So we add these layouts to the intensity layout here. And we're going to add our slider to that layout as well. So it, they will stack together like that. However, for the labels, we want to, to have, we want to have them from left to right. So we create another uh, Layout. And that's why I mentioned it's kind of like Russian dolls, because uh, you're going to have like layout and your layout and your layout. Um, and we're going to create our uh, slider. So our slider is a bit particular, and you can ignore it for now. But uh, since we need to create a custom uh, slider, like we want to override how the slider look, we're going to create uh, a custom slider which inherits from Q slider. So, why do we do that? Uh, and that's why uh, Qt is very useful. And that, that's how you can extend stuff is 
you can basically inherit from an existing widget, get all of its functionality and just either override some of the functionality. So in that case, we're going to override depend events. So how we draw the slider, but you can also add to it. Uh, so that's very interesting for that. Uh, and that's how you can kind of create your own widgets uh, and also reuse them. Uh, something I do a lot at work is uh, I created a, a library of like basic widgets and I reuse them in uh, every UI. Uh, it's very interesting because uh, things get are consistent for uh, our own end user and uh, it's this work as well. So we're going to create our uh, slider here. If it wasn't custom one, you, you would just uh, call it that way. So you would just uh, do something like that. We do add this slider to the intensity layouts. Um, and if we launch, you can see we have a slider here. It's at the bottom and it's normal and I'm going to explain uh, how we're going to uh, move it on top. Uh, pretty soon. And we also want to have a, a sort of default value. So the idea is like when you open uh, the interface and you open a file, you want to already have some smooth going on. So we set it to 25. So you can see it here when we uh, open our UI, our value is set to 25. Be aware that uh, doing a set value like that will actually uh, trigger a signal. So you may want to connect uh, your slider after you set the value. Or something that you can do, you can uh, basically um, have a, one function which is going to refresh so you can uh, block all the signal, change the value, and then uh, unblock the signal. But that's something that uh, we won't cover. I just want to mention it, that you can uh, block the signal very easily. Uh, it's in... Uh, Good documentation if you want to take a look. So now we want to have uh, Q labels. So we're going to create our Q labels under that uh, intensity label layout. So it's very simple. We just create a Q label. We set the text of it. And also we put a, a, a tooltip. Why not? That's always useful for, uh, for users. So if we run, we have a layout here and we have a tool tip here. So when you when you go have your mouse over, uh, it display what you set as a tool tip. So then you can see the layout is a bit messed up. And if I refresh the interface like that, it kind of like it follow along, but it's not that great. So we're going to add our uh, two other label. Like that. So now we have our label like that. But if I move that, it doesn't really follow along. Like the eye should be like at the end of the slider and the medium should be in between. Uh, so it's not great. So uh, we want to basically uh, use a, what's called a two spacer item. So what this one is going to do, and I'm going to. Uh, Add it right now. We want to add one between each uh, Q label. That will basically force the uh, thing to stretch out a bit. So, how does it work? You can basically define a, a minimum size here, so uh, minimum height and width. And you can, uh, and that's why it's very interesting, you can uh, set the size policy. So, fix means that the size won't change. Uh, and expanding, uh, that's why it becomes interesting, it's going to expand to take as much space as possible. So if I change our things here, so it doesn't change because it's fixed. But if we uh, set some value here, like something like rather large, okay, now what the other one? <laughs> I always uh, mess them up. So it's like, with an I. So you can see here we have uh, we have something slightly different because we have in between we have our uh, Q spacer. But what we want we uh, 
we don't want to have it fixed, we want to have it expanding. So if we send it to expanding, it would try to take as much space as possible. If uh, I can spell correctly, obviously. So you can see now we have something uh, rather different. Uh, if we move our interface like that, the eyes stick to the end and it's still there. And the medium is really at the uh, midpoint, no matter how we size our interface. And we do have a minimum here, as you can see, uh, that the minimum space uh, that the widgets uh, need to take. But it's pretty nice uh, the photo along apart from this space here and here. But personally, I read of uh, the QSpace or item and I use them a lot. Uh, and something you can use them for, and I'm going to show an example here. Let's say we want to uh, run out, use them like, to make things like straight on the side, but you can also. Uh, the size policy on just one or both uh, with an, an, an height. And if we do that, so now if we do that, uh, you see it's going to basically steady them. But we can uh, add enough space here to the intensity layouts instead of intensity label. And it's going to uh, basically uh, stick to the top because we have a spacer which go, it's invisible, but you go from here to here and it takes as much space. So things stay, stay to the top. That's a trick I really like to use uh, very often to make sure that things stay uh, on top and stick to it. However, for interface, we don't need that because we're going to add uh, a layout just right under it, um, which will be our uh, next step, basically. So for the next step, we uh, want to create a preview, a preview layout. So in this event that we created the intensity, uh, we can use the layout. And I'm going to show you uh, very quickly the advantage of separating stuff up outside of uh, code readability. So now we have two uh, widgets and two layouts. So we have our one on, on top here, the intensity one, and we have uh, a placeholder area uh, for um, curve preview. So now, like I mentioned, you can change the parents. So we can find it here. And something I like to do here uh, sometimes, I like to uh, return the main layout of that of that one, just like that. So I can uh, grab it. And if we do that, you can see now that our uh, layout is part of the intensity layout. It looks a bit similar, but you can see there is like uh, some margin because it's part of that layout. But let me go back to the uh, main layout. So for that one, we just want to have a preview. Uh, and that's why I put a temporary background here. Just so you can see uh, the space of it. Uh, that's something I, I, like, I used to like to do a lot when I was uh, like learning Qt. Uh, it was to set the background color for my layout. So I was able to visualize uh, how they were fitting together and if they were like, if the margin was all right and uh, things like that. So in this event, uh, then our um, slider, we're going to create a custom widgets uh, park of previewer. That one we just generate Q widgets because we don't want anything fancy. We just uh, want to be able to uh, override um, the paint event so we can just paint what we want. 
So if we go here, we want to create a preview here. And we want to have a fixed uh, height of it. We want to make sure that our uh, span widgets will only be uh, 200 pixels uh, up. And then we're going to place uh, a few spacers. And we create our uh, curve preview or, uh, widget here. So why do we do that? So we create uh, one layout here to take as much space as possible. Then we create one here under it, which is going to be a fixed height. And we set a few spacers. So we have a bottom spacer, a right spacer, and a spacer. So we're going to use that a bit later on. Uh, Basically, but that's to control uh, when how the um, curve uh, preview will behave when you uh, resize the interface. So if I open the UI, I'm going to open the final UI to show you why we do it that way. So that the final UI here. And as you can see, when we uh, resize, we kind of like resize the uh, curve as well, like that. But we want to be able to do that. So that's why we have a layout uh, with a fixed uh, height, which is, uh, sorry, a widget with a fixed height, which is within uh, another layout. So we're not limited uh, like, that, like that. And we, but we also can't go, uh, we can't go, um, we can't minimize, like there's really like it's 200 uh, pixel. And that's what we have. So that's. Well, we want in terms of behavior uh, right now, and we use uh, a bottom spacer to make sure that the uh, that the uh, that the curve uh, preview will basically stick on top, uh, no matter if we expand or not. That you can change it if you want. That's the behavior I chose for my UI, but you can change that behavior. So now we're in a good spot. We have our uh, We have a cruise slider, we have our uh, area for the uh, preview. So we're going to move on to the uh, UI4 uh, file here. And we're going to create the options. So like we've done, we basically, uh, it's here, we create our option layouts. So the other matter, uh, actually, um, and that's why we have our top to bottom uh, here. We have top to bottom and the other uh, of like when you create the other uh, layout and when you do the add widget would, would matter on like the order of appearance. So if you were to basically create the option before the preview, the option would be on top of the preview. And that's why I also like to separate things so I can move things around like that. Uh, So we go down and create our uh, options layout. And uh, we first then we start by creating a, a, the option bar that we want. So if we do that, you can see that we have some option bar here and we set a fixed height of 20. And we have a content margin, but only on the uh, left side. So it's left, top, right, bottom. I remember correctly. Now we want to basically change uh, how this bar is going to be displayed. So we want to make sure this stuff is lighter than uh, our default uh, theme. You can't really see it now, but uh, on the final interface, um, we want to make sure it's uh, lighter, no matter which theme we uh, use. So we grab the palette uh, and we just make it lighter. So now we're still on the option bar. So we're just going to create a Q push button. So that's how we're going to uh, add or show uh, our options. Uh, and it would look like as if we collapse uh, or expand them. 
So we set a text which is going to be plus by default, and we will change it later on. Uh, and that will be on the next session. Uh, how we do the collapsing, but we will change the text uh, dynamically. We set we set a fixed width to the button, and uh, we set it to flat. So flat means that uh, it won't basically oh, I need to save. I need to add a few more things mm -hmm. before I can shop. But uh, flat mean that uh, it won't appear as a button. So then that's so still, oh yeah, you can see it here. So if you don't say that's flat, like you can see you have your button here. And if you set it to flat, you don't have, you don't see the right uh, button. That's very good if you want to do kind of like, if you want to set an icon for your button, uh, and you want to have like a different integration in your UI. Now we want to have a, a label. Well, we're just going to show all oh, like we have options. Okay, so now we have our uh, menu bar with our button here. And we're going to create the uh, option layout. Just like that. And something we want to do now, we want to create a special widgets. We want to create a Q scroll area. What this one is going to do is going to create an area that can expand. That is a scrollable. So this area here. You can add as many uh, widgets as you want, and you would have a, like, once you reach limits, you're going to have a scroll bar here, uh, as well as below if you want. Um, and that's very, very useful to, like, add a lot of uh, widgets in one area, like, like, for options, for example. So you can, like, add more options as you go um, without really, like, having a huge interface. Then that's a choice to make. That's how you're going to design your uh, your application. And that's what we're going to add and show uh, actually later on. So we create um, a layout for this most type. So that's the uh, method that you see in the interface. So maybe if I can. I didn't design it to, uh, to show the code yet. So we create a code label like we've done before. And now we're going to create a, a, a cucumber box, which is a drop down menu. However, there is no item here, so it's empty. Uh, so what we want to do, we want to go back and say, OK, which kind of algorithm can we use? So that's when you go back to your uh, core function and you look at uh, your arguments, so the smooth tab. So we have uh, Savitsky, Gole, Gaussian, moving average, and, and mean average as well. So we're going to add uh, this tab in the constants here. So we're going to add a small dictionary. So we want to basically have a mapping of our algorithm name our method name and the text to display uh, below, if you remember. So now we're going to add uh, the key of the dictionary to our cucumber box. We go down below. So, in that, we can add the items. So now you can add a list, which is the add items, and you can see it here, show up in like that. Or you can uh, add item one by one with the add item uh, method. Just like that. So you can see now we have uh, an, extra, an extra one. So it's interesting because you can basically uh, clear 
you uh, cucumber box and uh, add items based on on like whichever option parameters you do. So if you have something, for example, like um, you need to refresh like a list of um, cities. So then, like let's say you do a uh, two drop down menu, two combo box, one uh, with a list of countries and one with a list of cities in that country only. You can uh, add items to your uh, country's combo box. And then you can, uh, based on the value of that, you can uh, clear and update the uh, list of item of your city combo box. So to do that, you can just clear the uh, cucumber box. So you can see you now I added those items. First, I clear the cucumber box and this, I just added one item. So that's something rather uh, interesting. If you do any kind of like UI, which is a bit more dynamic and we need to respond to uh, some other parameters in your UI. So now if we show uh, what we have, like same than before, you can see uh, things are not placed like very nicely, especially if we expand. So we're going to add uh, a spacer here. So we have our spacer here. So even if we expand that stick here, the uh, width of the cucumber box is defined by the uh, width of the uh, longest item, but you can set a, a fixed one as well. So now we want to have a small like, area where we want to uh, basically uh, have a description of our uh, algorithm. So we create another uh, layout to go under it. So that one was uh, top to bottom, this one was left to right under the option one. And we're going to use uh, something called a uh, plane text edit. So if you want to do anything with, uh, like display any kind of code or like some like formatted text, that's that the widget to use. And I really encourage you to read the documentation on that one. Uh, we use it with plain text, but uh, it's, you can really expand it. You can like display HTML and pages and things like that in it. So now we have a small area where we can actually uh, remove the uh, set tree only. Now we can type and we can enter stuff. So that's very useful if you want to uh, like have your user give a message. Like let's say you write something uh, to send emails that could be the body of the email, for example. I use it a lot uh, at work uh, where we want to give, where we want to have user give a small note or description of what they change uh, before they save. Uh, so we use that to uh, have them tap their text in. And uh, if you remember from the uh, Screenshot here we have a small uh, go back one. We have a small like bar here. So to do a, an horizontal or vertical bar, uh, either way work, uh, you want to use a cube frame. That would act as a separator. So we have our cube frame, and you can change the uh, shape or and shadow. So like you can look at the option of cube frame and see. Uh, what we have under it. And then we're going to add uh, our uh, shake box. So we do the same, we create our layouts, our label, and then we add a, a cute shake box. And we can set the default status. So now we have, we have something that we start to look like an interface. <laughs> Oh, and you can see this square area in action here. So the widget take more space than uh, what's available. So now you can scroll like that. Or like that as well. You can turn off uh, the vertical or horizontal scroll if you want. Uh, so that's something doable in the uh, Q scroll area option. 
And now we're going to just add the uh, the bottom spacer to make sure everything uh, stick on top, uh, even if we do any change to our uh, option uh, interface. Okay, so now we have uh, some basic uh, interface. We want to be able to uh, when you uh, update, when you change the uh, Cucumber box, so when you change the algorithm, we want to be able to update the uh, description of it. So how we're going to use that, we're going to use uh, signals. So we're going to create a function called update filter description. And I'm going to put a print here. And we're going to uh, connect the uh, signal of it. So where you put it depends really on like when you need to update. So in my case, I do it, I do the connection after I created everything because I don't want to trigger any uh, signal like while I build the UI. And in order to uh, update the description when you first open the UI, we're just going to call it as well again. So if we do that, you can see that uh, as we change, it's going to call our function. So we use the uh, current index change, which is uh, the signal uh, that the Cucumber box emits uh, when you change the uh, entry that is selected. So what do we want to do first? So first we want to, uh, we want to clear up our description text just in case. Then we're going to get our uh, type. So you can get the current text. So you can, there's two ways. You can either, uh, you can either do it like that and basically take the um, text based on the item selected, or you can just use the uh, current text, which is like an easier and faster way to get the current text. Um, you can also store some data as well, but that's a bit more advanced. And that's why the index uh, can be very useful. So now we check if it's in future, and that's why we uh, clear out our um, um, text before, our description. So we get the uh, description from our dictionary based on the uh, on the algorithm type, and we just set the plain text again. So we can see it here, we set it to something empty, and then we set it to the description. So if we do that, now as we update, we update this uh, bit of text here. So it's a bit more interactive right now. <laughs> so it's one step <laughs> um, to make it slightly more uh, interactive, basically. So we are almost done uh, for today. I'm going to just show one uh, last thing before we uh, go to the QA. So we're going to use some icons here. So you can see it here. I put some icons so to close, open, and save. So that's why I put the uh, icon here. And we're going to use that uh, in the uh, next session. We're going to create uh, our menu. So we're going to add like a menu to open, uh, open, save, and we're also going to connect uh, everything together uh, to basically um, filter the curve. Being able to open a file, browse to this file, open a, a curve, filter it, save it down, uh, how to apply a theme, uh, how to add a splash screen, and so on. Um, So I know we're ready for a Q if you have any question. So you can either put your question in the chat uh, or in the uh, Q&A as well. I'm going to give you a few moments to 
think if you have any questions. I guess nobody have any uh, questions, so maybe we have a bit of time. So don't try like we have like plenty of time to go a bit deeper. Or if there is some uh, part I want to be too too quickly, I can go over it again. Um, Okay, I guess we're ready to wrap up. <laughs> um, so thank you for coming uh, today. Um, if you have any question, um, yeah, I know it's a lot to, to digest. So um, yeah, I know that it's a lot to digest, so you may not have a question right now. Uh, feel free to go to the Slack channel, uh, go to the intro to QT uh, one, and uh, you can ask your question and I will answer it uh, as soon as I can. And um, Thank you for coming. The next session is uh, in two weeks on February 22nd. And that's where we're going to do the uh, last part to make our interface working before we dive a bit deeper uh, into our dependent events. You can find uh, the code uh, either on the links I gave you or uh, on Women Who Code uh, GitHub. And if you want to send me an email, you can uh, email me at this address over here. And we also have uh, on Thursday our uh, Ask Me Anything uh, with the Python software engineer. So that's, I really encourage you to attend as well. 